they're only Luna. Her triplet alphas from the POVs of Alex, Felix and Calix. Chapter 1 Not thinking about chastity. Alex's POV Snow and frost covered every surface outside my bedroom window. I was used to it. Our pack lands were made up of the wintry, icy wilderness, sleepy towns and snowed in cities. It never stopped snowing here but I was well adapted to the cold. I was soon to be an alpha after all. I was the eldest of three brothers. We were identical triplets and tomorrow, on our 21st birthday, we would ascend as alphas of my father's pack, the Winter Moon Pack. I looked in the mirror and sighed. The responsibility looming before me weighed heavily on my mind but I always refused to show it in the presence of my brothers or anyone else for that matter. My younger brothers were called Felix and Calix. Felix was a classic middle child. He courted attention like nothing else and was forever filled with wisecracks, jokes and comebacks. He was a lot sometimes but we were close. Calix was the youngest and I was naturally even more protective of him. Felix was so tough, I knew he could handle himself. It was Calix I worried about from time to time. He was sweet and sensitive, mom's favorite. Dad and Felix were always trying to toughen him up by encouraging him to be more aggressive. Mom loved the fact that he wasn't aggressive, he was more of a charmer. I was Alex, the eldest and perhaps, the most serious. I intended to be a no-nonsense alpha, neither too harsh nor too lenient. Our last name was Thorn and our dad was Alpha Romeo Thorn. Our mom was Luna Ronnie Thorn. We all resided in the Winter Moon Pack House, a colossal cabin which was really just a snow-topped mansion. We were quite wealthy like most alphas of large packs were. There was one other person who lived permanently in the pack house with us. Chastity. She was the daughter of a junkie couple who had racked up huge gambling debts which had been paid off by my parents. The couple had still fled town, leaving Chastity behind when she was a little girl. Our parents ha decided to take her in with the understanding that she would do housework and chores for free as a way to pay off her parents' debt. I always felt uncomfortable whenever I thought of Chastity. I didn't really like the fact that she worked here. She was too young to have a job whether or not she was paying off a debt. It was not like my parents needed that money back. Everyone called her Charity, a mocking nickname Felix concocted, thinking it was hilarious. I didn't like that either. Making fun of her lack of finances was kind of low but the name had stuck because it was so close to her real name. It was her birthday tomorrow too. She would turn 18 and come of age. We were three years older than Chastity but we were all born on November 11th, just different years. It had to suck, sharing a birthday with the famous Alpha triplets while she was the live-in maid and a high school student just trying to get by. I knew she was in a rush to graduate and run off, probably to look for her no-good parents. I tried to stop thinking about Chastity. Once I started obsessing over her, there was no stopping. I hated to admit it but I found her so beautiful. I pictured her big brown eyes, her smooth golden skin and her long, shiny dark blonde ringlets. She was about a foot shorter than me and slender but shapely. The tip of her nose was always a bit pink from the cold and I forever had the maddening urge to nuzzle her so I could make sure she was warm enough. Sometimes, I thought about calling a truce with her and telling her my parents' malice towards her didn't extend to me. I had been fantasizing about her 18th birthday tomorrow, about telling her just how fg beautiful I thought she was. She would blush and look down. I would grasp her chin and make her look at me. I hated how she never paid much attention to me. Then when our eyes locked, I would kiss her. Ugh. What the fk was wrong with me? I pushed those stupid thoughts away. I forced myself to shower quickly and think of anything but chastity. Felix's POV chastity. I was staring at the painting I had done of her, the one she didn't know about, the one on my bedroom wall, the one all my girlfriends fumed with jealousy over. I wouldn't take it down though. I refused to. I liked it. It was a good painting. She had a face that should be drawn and painted. Tomorrow she would be 18 on November 11th and my brothers and I would be 21. We were triplets and soon to be alphas. We would take over my father's pack officially tomorrow. We would be the alpha triplets of the winter moon pack. I looked outside. It was like living in a snow globe here. Ugh. I got sick of it sometimes. I could use a tropical vacation or something. I showered quickly and got dressed. I kept glancing at the painting of Chastity. She was a little maid my parents let live with us. She was working off the debt amassed by her gambling and drug-addicted parents. It was a pretty raw deal but she had a sassy mouth so I didn't always feel sorry for her. 
I smirked remembering one particularly savage comment she had made the other day. Ugh. Snap out of it, Felix, I told myself. I had FD up yet again last night. My current girlfriend Tanya and I had been making out. Things had gotten heated. I was not gonna just wait for my fated mate forever. I was gonna have fun when I wanted to while I waited. Anyway, Tanya had been particularly enthusiastic. I had moaned and she had parted from me and looked at me totally horrified. I had moaned Chastity's name not Tanya's. The problem was that wasn't the first time I had done that. It was the first time I had done it with this particular girl. I wanted to be indifferent to Chastity but as we got older, Chastity just grew more and more beautiful. She also hated me more and more as the days passed by. I knew I wasn't exactly nice to her but I could be if she would stop being such a little brat. Last night, after Tanya had stormed off, I had dreamt that I had snuck into Chastity's room after the birthday celebrations to wish her happy 18th. I smirked to myself. I sighed. That would never happen. I should not have given her that stupid nickname, Charity. It was so close to her real name that it had stuck. Everyone called her by the wrong name constantly because of me which was kinda hilarious and kinda awful at the same time. Calix's POV waking up to a winter wonderland every morning was thrilling honestly. I was filled with energy. Tomorrow was my birthday. My brothers and I would turn 21 and take over the pack from our father. Finally, we would be alphas, identical triplet alphas. I showered quickly and looked in the mirror. My brothers and I had the same thick wavy black hair that fell just below our shoulders, the same blue eyes and the same olive skin and dimples. We were all six foot four and had muscular builds. We resembled our dad a lot. I was extremely close to mom though. She was petite with pale skin and long brown hair. She was always dressed up, morning, noon or night. She did not cook, ever. We sometimes had cooks hired as well as maids but most of the housework if not all was usually done by Chastity. Chastity, or Charity as everyone called her, was three years younger than me though also born on November 11th. She had been dropped off here by her parents who had amassed a huge debt through gambling. They were also drug addicts so they wouldn't be winning parents of the year anytime soon. Our parents had paid off her parents' debts and took Chastity in. She did housework to earn her keep and repay her parents' debts. I sighed. My brothers and I were just one day away from being alphas and we didn't have a luna yet. We were identical which meant that we had been the same egg or ovum that split into three or something like that. Essentially, Alex, the eldest, said that made us like one alpha in three bodies, naturally occurring clones. For that reason, we would likely have just one mate, our one and only luna and we had yet to meet her. We wouldn't be able to pick up the smell of our mate if she wasn't of age yet so Felix's theory was that she was younger than us. I fought the urge to slide down the banister when I met my brothers on the staircase. I was one day away from being an alpha. I had to be a little more dignified. My eyes went to Chastity immediately. Her long dark golden curls were up in a huge bun. Her brown eyes were focused on setting the table nicely. I hated when she wore her hair in a bun. It was really beautiful and I liked it down. Did you make all of this, Charity? I asked as I reached for her hair tie to let down her hair. She dodged my hand to my chagrin. The sudden movement made her bump into Felix. Chastity too. Felix's POV. Chastity had made another feast for breakfast as my brothers and I were celebrating our birthday week. She bumped into me trying to get away from Calix. He had been trying to undo her hair tie. She had her long dark blonde curls up in a bun. I smirked at her and quickly slipped her hair tie off. Her hair tumbled down around her. She looked gorgeous even when she was tired. I felt a pang of guilt as I noticed the dark circles under her eyes. My parents were overworking her. I intended to hire a cook again and a regular maid when I ascended to Alpha. It was too much work for one person with a house of this massive size. Stop. Chastity whined as soon as I took the hair tie. She was petite like an entire foot shorter than me so I held the hair tie high up in the air where she couldn't reach it. I wondered if she would like me more after I hired more help. She was the only girl who never laughed at my jokes. She just scowled. I had yet to find my mate despite all the she-wolves in our pack, except Chastity, throwing themselves at me. My brothers and I, as identical triplets, would most likely be sharing a mate. Chastity would be eligible to find a mate tomorrow at the age of 18. My wolf snarled at the thought of Chastity with some loser guy, probably some low-ranking pack member who wouldn't be right for her. My wolf had a major thing for Chastity. Chastity lunged at me, 
reaching for the hair tie. I quickly threw it to Alex who caught it and kept it out of reach. She tried to jump for it but I grabbed her. I pushed her towards Alex who pushed her back towards me and so on. She did not like this game. I give up. I give up. She said. My brothers and I chuckled. Calix's POV Felix and Alex were going out of their way to annoy Chastity. My inner wolf snarled, sensing she was upset. They were too pushy with her. I never used to say anything when I was younger but we were all adults now. All right. Cut it out. Let her go wash the wares. Mom wants the place kept as clean as possible so there'll be less to do tomorrow. I watched as Chastity scurried into the kitchen. My wolf whimpered. I quieted him. She would be fine. I wished our parents used to let her eat meals with us though. My brothers were already wolfing down everything in sight. I grabbed a stack of pancakes and some bacon before it all disappeared. Honey, aren't you excited about being alpha tomorrow? My little Calix a big alpha. Squealed mom. I grinned. Yeah baby boy Calix, aren't you excited? Asked Felix, trying to spear a piece of bacon from my plate with his fork. I slid my plate away just in time and his fork slammed into the table, the tines bending slightly. Alex burst into laughter. Felix scowled. I'm excited, Mom. I can't wait to make you proud. I said. Mom glowed. You already make me proud, honey. Felix pretended to vomit. You all do. Said Mom, narrowing her eyes at Felix. Even you, Felix. She specified, pinching his cheek. Felix smiled. Alex, you'll still need to guide your brothers. Although you're all alphas, you're still the eldest. Birth order is important in packs, said Dad. I know, Dad, said Alex, nodding seriously. I felt sorry for Alex sometimes. He had the least fun among the three of us and it wasn't always by choice. Alex's POV I wasn't too excited about even more responsibility but I had been preparing for this ascent since I was a child so I was ready. The pack was very important to me along with each member as an individual. I glanced at the table. We were a family of five werewolves with four alphas present so basically everything was gone. There was still a pancake left and some bacon. Felix reached for it but I snatched both plates up, ignoring the scowl on his face. He was the greediest and ate the fastest. What's wrong, bro? I asked innocently. Felix rolled his eyes at me. He got up and left the table along with the rest of the family. I put the pancake and bacon back in the center of the table. These were for chastity. I should have put aside more for her. She didn't know it but I usually took extra food as though it was for me and then put it back on the platters because I knew she ate from what remained if she did not have time to cook twice, once for us and again for herself. I was sure she would be tired today. She had looked a bit weary. I would also wait and watch sometimes, staring at her from anywhere she wouldn't spot me while she sat and ate after us. I just liked looking at her. It was creepy though. I forced myself to go to my room, resisting the urge to stay and stalk Chastity. Chastity 3. Felix's POV Alex was such a stuck-up asshole sometimes. I loved both of my brothers to the moon and back but I'd never admit that, especially not to Alex. He was so bossy because he was the eldest triplet by five minutes. I spotted him leaving behind the pancake he had refused to let me have. What the fk? I zoomed back to the table at werewolf speed once Alex was gone. Chastity was there and had been eyeing the pancake. I snatched it up. I haven't eaten anything, she said, her eyes wide. My wolf whimpered, demanding that I hand over the pancake. My wolf was more annoying than Alex. Now, he was growling because he had decided one pancake wasn't enough and I should go make pancakes for Chastity. Me? Make pancakes for the little housekeeper? What sense did that make? She could just make more for herself. Good. You're fat enough as it is, I said. I ate the pancake in two bites though the guilt was killing me. I couldn't let my wolf rule me. He was a lot more dominant than my brother's wolves. He literally took over my body sometimes. I supposed I was just more in touch with my animalistic side. Chastity was not fat. I just wanted to piss my wolf off. He was snarling at me like crazy for that. He was more upset about the insult than the pancake. Chastity looked a bit crestfallen. I knew she thought of me as a shallow asshole. I pretended to go upstairs to my room as usual while she cleared the table and went off to school. I waited until I heard the door shut. I grabbed my coat and left the house quietly. 
Chastity didn't have a car obviously because she was broke. She was here to pay a debt not to make money per se. It wasn't safe for a young girl to go walking all over the place in this vast snowy wilderness. Our pack lands were tough to traverse even for alphas. I knew she was just walking to the bus stop but it calmed my nerves to see her off. I walked yards behind her as surreptitiously as I could. She was wearing Alex's old coat. My wolf was kinda jealous. She would smell like Alex instead of me. At least the male scent would deter boys at school. I would rather it be my scent though. She reached the bus stop. She was early. I stood far away from her. It was a wonder how she never caught me on mornings when I followed her to the bus stop. She would be a fully-fledged she-wolf tomorrow with amazing eyesight and hearing. How would I hide from her then and still manage to secretly walk her to the bus stop? She would smell me even if she didn't see me. FK. The bus came and she got on it. I smiled. Okay, she was safely on her way to school. I could breathe now. I walked back home slowly instead of running back at werewolf speed. I really needed to figure out this whole bus stop situation. When we were both in school, I would insist that Chastity ride with me in my car. I used to put her in the back and make fun of her non-stop. She would just roll her eyes. When we left high school at 18, Chastity was 15. That was when I started secretly making sure she got to school safe. Now, I had to figure out how to get her there safely after she shifted tomorrow when she turned 18. Sure, she'd be a she-wolf but there were crazy wolves all over the place. She would still need my protection. Ideally, I would like to get her a car and teach her how to drive. That was a lot safer than walking through the snow alone. I could not let Chastity herself or my parents or even my brothers know the car was from me. I could make up some ST like a sweepstakes or something and convince Chastity to enter. It would be rigged or fake obviously. Chastity would win the car and then I would begrudgingly teach her how to drive. That was a great plan. I was so into my kick-ass idea with the sweepstakes I didn't even notice five people on the porch at first. Careful. You'll walk straight into the door, bro. Laughed a very familiar voice. I looked up. Calix. He was sitting on the porch with Alex and all three of our girlfriends. Tanya, Sandra, and Avery. Tanya was my girlfriend and she was obviously still pissed at me. She sat on the steps, arms folded, refusing to look up at me. I didn't want to admit it but most of the girls I had dated lately interested me because there was something about them that reminded me of Chastity. My most recent ex had been blonde and cutesy like Chastity but pale instead of golden skinned like Chastity. Tanya was golden skinned with big brown eyes and a very sassy but sweet personality just like Chastity but she had dark, straight hair. You should curl your hair, beautiful, I said, taking some strands of her long hair and flinging them in her face playfully. She rolled her eyes at me but smiled slightly. And dye it blonde. Said Avery, Calix's girlfriend, who was tiny and blonde. Fuck yes. No. Said Tanya, flipping her hair. I laughed like it didn't matter. Sandra was on Alex's lap where he sat on one of the porch chairs. She had bright red hair, wavy and thick, and piercing green eyes. She fixed me with a glare. I wondered if Tanya had told her what had happened the other day when I called Tanya Chastity at the most inopportune time. Where's the maid? Asked Sandra snidely, narrowing her eyes. Yeah, Tanya had told her. Yeah, where's your housekeeper, babe? Said Tanya, glaring at me. You girls mean chastity? Asked Alex, truly clueless for once, and not liking it. Being clueless was Calix's job. Felix thinks no one knows that he walks chastity to the bus stop every morning. Said Calix, chuckling. What the fk? How did Calix know that? No, I don't, Calix, I said as though the very thought of that was ridiculous. What? Snarled Tanya. Oh hell no, muttered Sandra. Avery looked dumbfounded. Alex seemed genuinely surprised. Is that true, Felix? Asked Alex. Of course not. I snapped. Is it? Asked Alex, over mind link. Yes, I admitted privately. Good. He said. I offered to keep driving her after we left school as she couldn't catch a ride with us anymore and she said no politely but when I walked off and she thought I was out out of earshot, I heard her mutter, FK off, for goodness sakes. I snorted with laughter. Alex laughed too. Chastity had a mouth on her but she tried to hide it. I stroked my chin, thinking about what lie to tell Tanya for the time being. 
I was trying to get some pot cookies honestly. There's a guy who sells them by the bus stop, I said. So yet I was going in the same direction but I wasn't walking her to school, Calix, you idiot. Whatever, said Calix, laughing, clearly not buying it. I know you walk her to school every single morning. He said in my mind. Well, shut the FK up about it, then, I snarled back. Be nicer to her then. Said Calix. What? I asked, surprised. If you care about her so much that you have to stalk her to make sure she gets to the bus stop safely then be nice to her when you talk to her, he said. Are you in love with her or something? I asked sarcastically. Are you? He asked seriously. Who's ready for a pre-birthday bar crawl? I asked, trying to change the subject. Did you get them? Asked Tanya, eyeing me suspiciously. Get what? I asked. The pot cookies, said Tanya. Oh, st, no. The guy wasn't there, I said. You hardly ever have those things, commented Sandra. It was true. It's my birthday week, I said. She snorted with laughter. We went to a random bar. Come tomorrow, my brothers and I would not be this carefree so we might as well enjoy it. I didn't have much time to organize the car and the fake sweepstakes. I called my dad's beta, Keaton, and stood away from the group. I couldn't have Tanya hear this. She'd go ballistic. Hey, Keaton. I asked. Hey. Felix. My favorite new alpha. He said. I used to date his daughter and he had been thrilled about potentially having an alpha son-in-law and alpha grandkids but we weren't fated or anything. When she found her mate, I'd been cool about it and he respected me even more for that. I wished I could find my mate. I'd been searching for three years along with my brothers. I couldn't wait to hold her and kiss her and make her moan under me. I pushed those X-rated thought away. I need a small favor, I lied. It was a big favor. Sure thing. He said immediately. I would be his alpha tomorrow so it's not like he would have said no even if he didn't like me as much as he did. Can you organize a car for me, a new one, a good safe one? I said. Yeah, he said slowly. You want another car? He asked, confused. Don't you want to pick it yourself? It has to be bought secretly. I will wire you the money. Please don't tell anyone not even my brothers that I asked you to buy it. I swear it's nothing sketchy but it has to be secret, I said, feeling a tad idiotic. Present for a girl. He asked knowingly. My wolf was happy we were getting Chastity a car and wanted to shout it to the world. No, I chuckled. Come on. You found your mate, didn't you? He asked. I wish. Nah. I wish though. It's a prize sorta. It'll go to a lucky winner, I said vaguely. Okay, sure, said Keaton. Top secret. I reminded him. My lips are sealed, he said. How about a Range Rover? Sure. I said. An SUV. I wanted her in something I could put a grill on in the back and the front so she could ram into another car without any harm coming to her and her car. I expected Chastity to be a shitty driver. I couldn't wait to see her face when she saw her car. Ugh, I would love it if I could admit to her that is was from me. Felix. Snarled Tanya. What are you doing? I'm coming. I said, annoyed. Tanya was so clingy. She would show up to my house every single day. I needed a girl who had other interests and desires besides me. I missed you, said Tanya sweetly when I came back to the booth everyone was it. A couple of our brothers we used to play football with had joined us. I focused all my energy on enjoying my birthday week and on not thinking about Chastity. Chapter 2, Arguing Within About Chastity 1 Arguing Within About Chastity Alex's POV Felix was being secretive about something even with me and Calix. He kept excusing himself to talk on his cell. Tanya was livid. The vibe between them was weird today. Not that it mattered. Tanya and Felix were not fated mates. In fact, we would all have to leave our girlfriends when we found our fated mate, our Luna. I could scarcely wait to find her. I had hoped I would find her somewhere between 18 and 20 years old. I was turning 21 and taking over as Alpha tomorrow with no Luna. Mom was tough to deal with at times but Dad would be lost without her. She had also given him us, his heirs. All of that was swirling in my mind while I was out drinking or perhaps it was the alcohol that produced the swirling effect. 
I did feel a little bit giddy but it wasn't easy for a werewolf, especially not an alpha, to get drunk. Let's call it a night, I said. It's still early. Wind Calix. Avery giggled from where she sat in our booth on his lap. The girls were a lot tipsier than us. They had driven to the pack house to see us this morning. They shouldn't be driving home in this state. We should drop the girls home, I said. Our cars are at your place, babe. Whimpered Sandra, nibbling on my ear. You know I can't live without my car. She complained. You shouldn't be driving, I said. Let's go back to the pack house and then drop the girls home in their cars and then shift and run back. Suggested Calix. Yes. Wolf run. Growled Felix playfully. Ugh. No. Okay, I said unenthusiastically. I was not in a running through the snow on all fours kind of mood. I wish I was curled up somewhere, with my Luna. Why was my wolf pushing thoughts of my Luna into my mind every five seconds? We usually obsessed over this but not this much. Did he know something that I didn't? Was she nearby? I felt a bit excited. Maybe, I should shift soon and see if I can get a whiff of her or some clue. Our senses were great in this form but they were way better in wolf form. Guys, let's go. I said, eager all of a sudden. I got up and pulled Sandra up. She laughed at nothing in particular. Tanya was glaring at Felix because his phone was ringing again. Hey Keaton, said Felix, walking quickly ahead of us. Where are you going? Snarled Tanya. Just a sec, beautiful, called Felix. Come back here right now. She said and she actually stamped her foot. Yeah, she was not the one. I knew we weren't stellar boyfriends to the girls we weren't fated to or anything like that but we weren't jerks. We made sure they were safe and relatively happy. Tanya was always pissed even when they were not in a fight. Sandra egged her on. Avery was honestly, a tad ditzy. I didn't think she understood enough things to have anything to get pissed or upset about. I wondered what Chastity was doing. Her image flashed in my mind. I wanna go home. Felix come on. I yelled after him. He actually listened to me. We need to check on, the party planner, I lied. Yeah, I wanna go home too, to check on the party planner, said Felix, agreeing. I could sense he was lying too. We drove the girls back to the pack house. I drove slowly even through my head had cleared already. Felix sped through the snow like he was in fast and furious Tokyo drift or something. Calix had this meandering zigzag way of driving which was super annoying and gave me anxiety. I hated driving behind him. I couldn't drive fast enough to be behind Felix. We arrived at the pack house where the girls' cars were but the girls were thirsty so we went inside. This is the party planner you wanted to check on. Asked Tanya, clearly envious. The party planner Rhonda, a blonde woman in her thirties, eyed Tanya just as enviously. I knew a lot of girls wanted to be with us. I could understand that in a non-arrogant way, we were rich, they'd be Luna, they'd have three alphas catering to their needs and whims non-stop. Even if you had a fight with one boyfriend, you could just go complain to your other two boyfriends and they all knew and approved of each other. It was a pretty nice package. I instinctively looked around for Chastity. She was the party planner's helper. She was made to help with everything even the birthday party preparation although it was also her birthday. I knew mom and dad never got her anything. She sorta hated me so I didn't feel that inclined to gift her anything in person but I had been thinking of buying her some new clothes and pretending like they were mom's old clothes and fooling dad into handing a basket of them to Chastity. Or maybe even Calix. She might accept something from him. She had a preference for him or at least hated him the least. I kept trying to steer Sandra towards the door. She got the message. Girls, let's go, she said. She was kinda the leader of the other two. Avery and Calix were making out and Rhonda kept making a lot of noise with her prep, slamming cupboard doors and shaking bags of confetti and glaring at Avery. We drove the girls home in their own cars. They all lived in the same affluent residential area. We met up in front of Sandra's house. Let's do this, said Felix, stripping shamelessly. I rolled my eyes. I undressed and felt my bones break and reshape themselves until I was a massive dark wolf. Calix nipped me immediately in his wolf form and ran away meaning for me to chase him. The air was cold and crisp and the snow was nice and crunchy under my paws. I ran after him and Felix bounded after us. It barely took a few minutes to reach the pack house. We were fast. I got onto the porch in wolf form, 
sniffing about while my brothers shifted. They looked at me still in my wolf form like I was crazy. Okay, we're home now, Alex, said Felix pointedly, dressing in clothes we always left in a hamper on the porch. I was trying to pick up my Luna's scent. I smelled Rhonda who smelled of stale bread and hair dye. I smelled chastity, honeysuckle, and roses. She had a beautiful scent but there was no seductive edge to it like my Luna would have but she was not of age so that was to be expected. I paused, thinking about that. It couldn't be. I probably just wanted it to be chastity because she was beautiful and there already and sassy and ignored me and I wanted her attention and... Ugh stop it. I shifted. You drunk, big bro? Asked Calix worried. No, little bro, I'm good, I said with a laugh, grabbing a random outfit. We went inside and Rhonda was all smiles. I smiled at her politely and she beamed at us. What's up, Rhonda? Said Felix. You know, I didn't want to say anything but Charity came home really late from school. Felix's POV. Where is she? I demanded, immediately freaking out. The afternoon school bus dropped her straight home, an arrangement I had secretly made with the driver. I didn't ask the same favor in the morning because I wasn't busy then and I liked walking her myself. I was gonna kill that guy. He was supposed to call me whenever she missed the bus. FK. She's here now, some girls dropped her home, said Rhonda. Chastity actually had friends. She was so sullen. That was nice. Maybe, I shouldn't kill the bus driver. Chastity crawled out from under the kitchen table. My jaw dropped. She looked, very, uh, womanly. Well, she would be a woman tomorrow I supposed. She looked gorgeous but I was annoyed. She never dressed up. This was for a boy. I just knew it. Some snotty nose horny grabby hands motherfucker from that stupid high school. I was gonna scare the ST out of him as soon as I found out who he was. Leave it to us, Rhonda, I said, sneering at Chastity in her mini skirt and high heels. We'll punish her. If I waited till midnight when she turned 18, maybe I could put her over my lap and spank her. My wolf liked that idea. We were in agreement for once. I could tell my brothers were shocked by her new look too. She stood in front of the kitchen island. I'm sorry, she said. I had to do some extra math for Mr. Johnson. She looked nervous. My wolf told me to go easy on her. Why should I? After all the stuff I've done for her, why should I condone this kind of thing? I didn't want her with some loser boy from school. That was a distraction. I knew she was bright and couldn't afford college obviously but if she wanted to go, I could do another fake sweepstakes or fake scholarship or something and pay for it. I didn't want her far away though. My wolf reminded me she didn't know that I'd ever done anything for her. Oh yeah. That was true. Okay, I said, trying to be fair. I got closer to her. She smelled of roses as always with a hint of honey. Good no nasty male scent on her. Thank goodness. What's all of this? I asked her, gesturing to the tiny outfit. She was wearing makeup and she had her hair was as beautiful as ever. She would draw too much attention like this and then I would have to beat up some boy and then dad would be pissed. My 18th birthday is tomorrow too. I'm just trying out how I want to look, she said with her eyes downcast. Do you have a boyfriend, is that it? Asked Alex, sounding angry. Exactly. Do you? I'm too fat to get a boyfriend, remember. She said sassily referencing our earlier exchange. My wolf turned on me, his anger at my insult from this morning reigniting. He told me to apologize to Chastity. Calix was quiet, just smiling at Chastity, his eyes lit up. Don't play games with us, I said softly. A horrifying thought crossed my mind. What if this new look was to entice her mate? What if she had an inkling of who he was? My chest literally hurt and my inner wolf let out a sorrowful howl. Is all of this for your mate? Have you figured out who he is? I asked, already panicking internally. No. She said. I felt so relieved I was giddy. Please don't be lying to me Chastity. Please. You'll only know for sure tomorrow. Your inner wolf will tell you who your mate is, said Calix. I don't want a mate, she said. Was this girl crazy? My wolf was going crazy and blaming me for this. How was this my fault? Why the hell not? Asked Alex. Yet. Yeah. Why he hell not? Because he'd just be mean to me and call me names and I get enough of that from you, 
she snapped. Fuck. Okay, I saw why my wolf was blaming me now. FK. Was I that bad? Had I made Chastity not want a mate? Literally the greatest pleasure in a wolf's life. Are you stupid? Asked Alex. My wolf winced at that. Ugh, it was our fault wasn't it? Especially me. I should explain mates to her. She was young and she didn't get it, that's all. No werewolf would insult his own mate or be mean to her, I explained. I rolled my eyes. She should know better than this. All werewolves worshipped their mates. Don't you know anything? Asked Calix. Okay, thanks, I get it now, she said simply. Were we making it worse? Wait. What if she was just trying to impress us with her little outfit? We were alphas. Girls usually threw themselves at us. Chastity was coming of age. Maybe she had finally had enough of our bickering and wanted to make nice. I was ready to make nice. Real nice. My wolf approved of this. You dressed up for us, didn't you? I said, watching her reaction to my accusation carefully. I smirked at her, stroking my chin as I scrutinized her expression. She seemed shell-shocked by the question. Don't make her admit it, said Calix. She's embarrassed, Felix. So even baby boy Calix agreed with me. Chastity wanted to look cute for us. My wolf and I were very happy with the sudden turn of events. Maybe. I should tell her blatantly that the car was from me when it came. Admit it. You did this for us. I exclaimed, closing the distance between me and Chastity until her back was against the kitchen island. Being this close, I realized her scent was much more beautiful than I remembered. She always had a pretty smell, not like Rhonda and her moldy sandwich smell, but it was enhanced somehow. Yeah, okay, said Chastity softly, looking down, clearly embarrassed. She hugged herself tightly. I dressed up for you. I asked two girls at school to help me. I really did have a math thing but I went to get dolled up after so that made me late as well. I'm sorry, she said, confessing and topping it off with an apology. I was stunned to hear her admit it. My heart was beating so hard and so fast. I didn't know what to say. Chastity had a little crush on us. My wolf was howling in delight. He was the president of the Chastity fan club after all. She covered her face with her hands. She was shaking a little. O.S.T. We made her cry. F.K. I hated that. I wasn't good at comforting people. Thankfully, Alex spoke. Hey, you know, we aren't the stupid little boys we used to be when we would fight with you, said Alex, keeping his tone gentle. We're taking over this pack tomorrow and as you're part of this pack we just want to know what's going on with you that's all. She didn't look up just yet. Don't cry, stupid, I said, feeling desperate. My wolf snarled at the insult. Don't insult her when you're trying to cheer her up, stupid, said Calix. Were Calix and his wolf trying to usurp the presidency of the Chastity fan club? Chastity, said Calix, making sure to use her correct name and not her nickname Charity. She looked up at Calix. Her eyes seemed dry. Had she been faking? Calix neared her. Thanks for dressing up for us. I hope you wear an even shorter skirt tomorrow, said Calix in a stage whisper. She rolled her eyes at us and we burst into laughter. She tried to brush past me and my wolf reached for her before I could stop him, lifting her and placing her back against the kitchen island. I pretended like I was annoyed with her defiance. I couldn't let her know how my wolf got the better of me sometimes. She would think I was weak. Did I say you could leave? I asked leaning so close to her that our noses brushed. She squirmed in my arms, making me realize I was still holding her. You need to have respect for your alphas, Charity, said Alex, using our not-so-nice nickname for her and ruining the sweet talk from Calix that had calmed her down. FKU. She screamed in my face. My wolf whined, begging me to hold her tight and whisper soothing things to her. Let me go. Three alpha males against one omega female is insane. You have no honor she cried, struggling to get out of my grip. I let her go. We were just playing with you, Charity. I called after her as she darted away. Good grief. Go. Run upstairs. My wolf desperately wanted me to run after her. I wanted that too but I couldn't bring myself to do it. She hated me. I was a fool to think she had suddenly developed a crush on us. Calix's POV. 
I felt heartbroken watching Chastity run upstairs, so upset. There were three of us. She probably felt we were bombarding her. Why had Felix and Alex used that stupid rude nickname? Ugh. Felix. Why are you such a jerk to her? I snarled, my eyes darkening. My wolf and I were angry. Me. Said Felix incredulously. Yes, you. I snapped. Baby boy Calix, chill out, said Felix dismissively. That was enough. I'd had it. You always overdo it. I bellowed shoving Felix. He shoved me back. I growled, my wolf coming forwards to handle the situation. Calix, chastised Alex. Don't. Felix. Said Alex sternly. Calm down. We probably were too harsh with her. And you both called her charity instead of chastity, I pointed out, my anger growing again. I'm done, I yelled, walking away from them and heading outside. You're just as dramatic as charity. Said Felix. I stopped in my tracks and turned around to glare at my elder brothers. Chastity deserves better and you both know that. I snarled. Felix began to look guilty. Alex nodded, his gaze softening. Calix, I'm sorry. Let's go get some rest okay, said Alex. We're going out just before midnight to ring our 21st birthday in. Tell Chastity you're sorry. I insisted. Felix squirmed uncomfortably. He glanced at the direction Chastity had gone in. I'll apologize, said Felix, shocking Alex and me. At the birthday party tomorrow, said Felix. I've been wanting to talk to her anyway. Alex. I asked. He wasn't getting away with acting like he had done nothing wrong. I'll apologize also, said Alex. But separate from Felix, he added. I need to speak with Chastity alone tomorrow anyway. About what? Asked Felix, getting annoyed again all of a sudden. What does it matter? Asked Alex. Felix huffed but remained silent. I didn't know we were going out to ring things in at midnight, I said. I had planned on keeping watch at Chastity's door to her little room. She would shift tonight at midnight. Shifting for the first time was painful and scary. She might need me. Chastity and I had a different sort of relationship to the ones she had with Felix and Alex who hid every nice thing they did for her. I was more open with her. I hoped she could see that. I hoped I was her favorite. I grinned at that thought. Wipe that stupid grin off your face, said Felix. I growled at him. Aw come on Calix, I'm joking, said Felix, breaking into a smile. I smiled slightly. He pulled me into a hug. Alex joined in. You two go hug and make up with Chastity then, I mumbled. Felix burst out laughing. She'd probably scratch my eyes out if I tried to put my arms around her suddenly after what just happened, Felix said, trying to hide the hurt in his voice. Not that I care, he added, clearly torn up inside that Chastity disliked him. Alex just smiled in the direction Chastity had gone. It's her birthday too tomorrow. She might be in a good mood, said Alex. You never know what tomorrow could bring. Are you working for the Hallmark Channel on the side, Alex? Snapped Felix. Go take a nap, barked Alex. Both of you. You're cranky. I chuckled. I walked upstairs. Chastity was in her room. I could smell her sweet floral scent. I neared the door. I could not bring myself to knock on it. My fist was raised and hovering just an inch away from the wood. I sighed. I went up a floor to our parents' room and banged unceremoniously on the door. What the fk, I heard my dad mutter. Mommy. I said. Calix. Squealed mom. She rushed to the door and threw it open. She was holding her robe around her tightly. Dad was hastily tying his robe. My face paled. I'd interrupted something. What is it, honey? Cooed mom. Are you nervous about being alpha? She asked, ushering me into the room. We sat on the edge of the bed. Dad scowled. No, I mumbled. What is it, Calix? Tell mommy, please. Asked mom. Stop babying that boy, Ronnie, said dad sternly. Romeo, snapped mom, flashing him a warning look. He sighed and fell silent. Dad was a tough alpha but mom was secretly the boss in my opinion. She was a tough Luna. My brothers want me to go out before midnight to count down to our birthday, I told her. That's wonderful, honey. 
they're including you. Remember, when you would get left out sometimes. Said Mom. Dad snorted with laughter. We both glared at him and he stopped. He had that Felix sense of humor. Yeah, I admitted. Alex and Felix would run off without me sometimes but they had stopped doing that a while now. But I had plans at midnight, I said. With a girl. Asked Mom, looking shocked. Yeah, I breathed. Calix, chastised Mom. Chastity, I said. What? Barked Mom. Yeah, she doesn't know, but I was gonna wait for near midnight and hang about for when she shifts in case she needs me, I said, telling her my idea. It was a great idea. I was proud of it. I grinned at Mom. She didn't look happy with me being thoughtful like usual. Did I do something wrong? I asked. No, honey, no, she said. So I have a favor to ask. I said. What is it, anything for you? Said Mom brightly. Dad grumbled to himself. Will the two of you please keep an eye on Chastity? And give her shifting advice? So I can go with Alex and Felix? I asked. I was torn between the two. If I turned down my elder brothers and their plans, they would exclude me again which I didn't need this close to being CO Alphas with them. Mom looked uncomfortable. She and Dad exchanged a glance. Mom. I said sharply. Yes, we'll talk to her, agreed Mom. Dad nodded. And make sure she gets back inside safely after her shift. I specified. If she's late coming back please call me. I said, locking eyes with Mom. I will, said Mom. How late is late? Asked Dad. Half past midnight, I said. Thirty minutes to run about before she has to come in. Asked Dad incredulously. Yes. I snarled. She's a young girl in a frigid wilderness. Dad growled. I growled back louder, shocking myself, Mom and him. I opened my mouth to apologize but Dad spoke first. Finally. He commented, clapping me on the back. You're acting like an alpha. Making your demands. Okay. Yes, exactly, I said quickly, looking very unapologetic for my bad behavior, as Felix always did. Yay. He was not upset at all. I expect a report of events afterwards, I said. I wasn't sure what that even entailed exactly but Alex said that a lot in pack meetings and Dad always looked proud. Sure, we'll call by one and tell you what went on, said Dad. Oh, it was literally just a conversation saying what happened. Yes, of course, I said. I couldn't get too tipsy. My tolerance was a little lower than my elder brother's because I drank less. It was still difficult to get completely drunk though as a future alpha. I was so relieved. My wolf and I were elated. They would keep an eye on my chastity for me. Tomorrow, I would be alpha and some stuff was gonna change around here. Starting with me picking out a different room for chastity. I also wanted her to have a proper allowance so she could buy herself things. The money was mine come midnight and I cancelling this loan chastity was paying off. I didn't want her free labor. It was gross and weird. I would argue about that tomorrow in my alpha voice. My wolf and I were so excited. No one could disagree with us soon, not officially, anyway. Thanks mom and dad, you're the best. I said. On the way back to my room, I went back to Chastity's door to make sure she was still in there. I smelled her. She was. Soon, things would be so much better and easier for you Chastity. I rest my forehead on her door. I quickly pulled away in case my smell disturbed her or even scared her. I was not sure how similar I smelled to my brothers. We were identical. I kissed my palm and then I placed my hand to the door. That was how I said goodnight to Chastity. She didn't know that obviously. That was my one secret ritual. Aside from walking her to school. The first time I tried I realized Felix was already doing it. He was such a closet softie. I glared at his door on the way to my room. I threw one last look at my Chastity's door before I went in for a nap. Chapter 3 Spying on Chastity Shifting Alex's POV I decided to be the designated driver for my brothers so we would live to see our 21st birthday. I did not want Speed Demon Felix or Zigzag Calix driving later. We ended up at one of our favorite restaurants, Winter Moon Snack. The girls met us there. Thankfully, Sandra's sister dropped them off and would be back for them later. Some of our brothers came out to ring in our birthday with us too. 
One of them was our soon-to-be Gamma, Caden, and his mate Christina. Caden was a few years older than us and had been the Pax Gamma for the past three years. He had met his mate just six months ago and the two were now inseparable. She was from Marigold and Caden had just happened to go with Dad to a meeting with Alpha Maze of Marigold. I almost didn't go, said Caden. Alpha Romeo said it wasn't mandatory and I've never turned down a day off before to be honest, chuckled Caden. What made you go? I asked, always intrigued to hear about how people found their mates. My wolf made me. He was so agitated for some reason. He would have never let me enjoy that day off so I went and then I saw her, said Caden sounding awestruck. She was in the pack meeting. I asked. My dad is a chef. He was catering the alpha meeting and usually my sister Katie helps out but something just made me go instead, said Christina with a smile. Ave, cooed Calix. Baby boy Calix is gonna be recounting this in his diary later, said Felix. Christina giggled. Do you actually like Caden? Asked Felix, in a completely serious tone. Christina burst into laughter. Yes, of course, I do. Caden threw a fry at Felix. The fry actually landed in Calix's hair. Felix showed Calix where the fry was. Calix removed it and ate it. I wondered about my two younger brothers sometimes. I'm really happy for you both, I said. Caden and Christina beamed at me. They would make great pack leaders. I hoped I would have some of their luck. I could feel Sandra glaring at me. She always got annoyed when I seemed excited about the prospect of finding my mate. I would genuinely be happy for her if she found her mate though. I'd be even happier for myself if I found mine. Caden excused himself to use the bathroom after giving Christina a gentle kiss on the forehead. All right, he's gone now, what do you really think of him? Asked Felix conspiratorially, eliciting a round of laughter from the table. Christina laughed too. Caden came back. They looked at each other like they were looking at the eighth world wonder. I sighed inwardly. I wanted my Luna so badly. I think faded mates are overrated said Avery, in a rare declaration of her opinions. My cousin married someone she was not fated to and it turned out fine. Her husband divorced her for his mate, didn't he? Asked Calix. Yeah, but then the divorce lawyer turned out to be my cousin's mate and it all turned out fine, said Avery. I stared at her. Caden seemed concerned about her. Her smile remained placid. Okay, said Felix slowly. Moving on. Won't you three be jealous if you just have one mate? Asked Caden. Hopefully, the guys will understand why she likes me best and it'll all be okay, said Felix, his expression grave. Caden laughed. It's almost your birthday, babe, said Tanya. I checked my watch. One minute to midnight. One of the waitresses we'd known for years wheeled a tray with a huge cake over to us. It was lit with twenty-one candles. Martha! exclaimed Calix. This is awesome. Martha, a blonde waitress in her forties, grinned at him. Special order for the birthday boys and new alphas, she said with a wink. Everyone sang happy birthday to us. I wanted to feel happy as I stared at my birthday candles but I felt alone, scared and sad. Chastity. No one was singing happy birthday to her. No one was there for her first shift. Shit. I stood up suddenly, startling everyone. What's wrong? Big bro? asked Felix, alarmed. I, I began but fell silent. If I breathed Chastity's name around Sandra and Tanya, this celebration would not end well. I talked to my brothers over Mind Link instead. We need to go home. Chastity is shifting like right now. I can feel it. And she's alone and she's scared and. It's okay, said Calix brightly, interrupting me. How is that okay? I asked incredulously. I asked mom and dad to watch her for me. They have to make sure she's back inside the pack house safely by half past midnight and report back to me by one o'clock, said Calix. Felix looked shocked. I was too. I was impressed. I nodded, sitting back down. Sorry, I said. Growing pains, I added. Our friends chuckled awkwardly. You're gonna make a great alpha, Alex. Don't you worry, said Marcia. I smiled at her. Felix's POV I knew this was really childish of me but every birthday, I always felt excited about blowing out my candles so that I could make a wish. As idiotic as it might sound, I really believed that birthday wishes came true. 
all the wishes I had made so far had actually come to pass but then again I always wished for realistic things that probably would have happened anyway. This year I wished for something that felt daunting. A wish that really needed magic involved. I wished for Chastity to be truly happy, preferably with me in her life. I knew she could possibly find happiness after running away from the pack house like she planned but I wanted to make up some fraction of her happy life. I didn't need her to fall at my feet. I just wanted her to know I wasn't a monster. I wanted her to think of me when I wasn't around. I wanted her to smile at me and mean it. I wanted her to smile in general. I wanted whatever it would take for her to look forward to each day and sleep peacefully each night. I took one of the birthday candles after we'd blown them out and put it in my pocket. I always kept one of the candles I'd wished on until the wish came true. I did not trust our parents to help Chastity with her first shift. For that reason, I had asked Beta Keaton to discreetly keep an eye on her. He had already mind-linked me. He was quite good at long-distancing mind-linking and he was a bit too mature to enjoy hanging with us and Gamma Kaden. He had daughters around our age. How is she? I asked Beta Keaton, hoping I was projecting my mind-link well enough. She's just finished her first shift. She's just playing in the snow a little, he said. My heart felt so full. Maybe, my wish was coming true already. Are my parents anywhere to be found by chance? Did they help her with her shift? I asked. I saw your mother looking out the window at her when she was shifting, said Beta Keaton. I supposed that was better than nothing. She's not watching anymore. Now, your dad is keeping an eye on her from the window upstairs, said Keaton. What's Chastity doing? I asked eagerly. Rolling about in the snow, said Keaton. I smiled. What's her wolf like? I asked curiously. Petite. Sandy colored. Most blondes have sandy fur as wolves, said Keaton. I tried to focus on cutting the cake with my brothers. If we had a more normal relationship with Chastity, we could have been cutting the cake together a little while after her shift. Calix offered me a huge spoonful of cake. It was good. Hazelnut chocolate. A favorite of ours. Tanya, Sandra, and Avery began sharing up the huge cake. I felt dazed. My wolf was very anxious and wanted to go home. I drank a little more than I should have so he would quiet down. Did mom and dad call yet? Asked Alex, glancing at Calix. Not yet, said Calix, sounding worried. It's only quarter to one, I said. I actually, um, asked Keaton to keep an eye on Chastity for me. Wait one second, so when you're not stalking Chastity, the beta does it for you? Asked Calix incredulously. How is that any different from you asking our parents to watch her? I snarled. He had wanted her supervised too. Because mom and dad already live there and they should be watching Chastity. I shouldn't even have to ask them. They should have helped her automatically, said Calix indignantly. It was true. She was a member of their pack and she lived in the pack house. She was their responsibility. Enough bickering. Demanded Alex. How is she doing then, Felix? What did Keaton say? He said she's basically just frolicking in the snow, I said. Ah, cooed Calix. You seem far away, said Tanya, narrowing her eyes. Are you stressed about becoming Alpha? No, I said. I'm looking forward to it. Just a little tired. We should all go back to the pack house if you guys are tired, suggested Sandra quickly. Alex, you're tired too, aren't you, babe? Asked Sandra. Before Alex could reply, she continued, you look tired. I did not trust Sandra one bit. I honestly felt like she was trying to trap Alex by getting pregnant intentionally. She was always annoyed when he wanted to use protection and she did not want to use birth control. She also did not like him pulling out. She was nuts. She just wanted to get pregnant with a little future alpha as soon as possible whether she and Alex were meant to be or not. Let's go back to your place and get some rest. She said cuddling up to him. You know my mom doesn't really approve of sleepovers, mumbled Alex. You're the alpha now though. And the eldest. You're the boss. Said Sandra. Mom is still the Luna until, well, mom is still the Luna, Sandra, said Alex. He just couldn't be bothered with having her stay over and he didn't want to admit it so he was blaming mom and her rules. I doubted she would care that much. She would probably just be a little frosty in the morning when she realized the girls had spent the night. 
my wolf was ready to dissociate from me and become his own man at the thought of Tanya sleeping over. He acted like we were cheating on our future Luna every time I was with a girl. The fur ball was a hypocrite because he was head over paws for chastity and she wasn't. Was I the dumbest werewolf alive? I had thought that honor went to Calix or his girlfriend Avery. Calix, Alex, you ever think that maybe, chastity is, ours, I said. Hey, said Calix. What do you mean ours? Our responsibility? Of course. Said Alex. No. I growled, frustrated. Never mind, I said quickly. I was drunk. I was just drunk. That was all. I was drunk and I was horny and Chastity was officially 18 and Tanya was super annoying these days. So you're really not gonna let us sleep over? Demanded Sandra. I'm really tired, babe, said Alex softly. You're really full of it. Snapped Sandra, raising her voice, making people at other tables look at us. They were already hyper aware of us because we were the new alphas, celebrating our milestone birthday. Alex's eyes flashed black for a split second but in pure Alex fashion, he got his aggression under control in record time and forced a tired smile. He leant really close to her, their noses almost brushing. Do not speak to me like that, he said, his tone cold and deadly. Chastity had told Alex to fuck off or the more classic fuck you both directly and indirectly at least 100 times over the years. She thought he was super hard on her because he scolded her telling her to have respect for her alphas. Sometimes, he lectured her. We had never gotten into a physical fight except for that one time. I could not bring myself to think about it. We had been children then and when my wolf came in around 18, he literally drained me of the memory because he was fiercely protective of Chastity. I could not picture that day even if I tried. All I knew was that I felt sick when I thought about it and it was something to do with cold water and I was glad she had not drowned. Had we pushed her into ice fishing hole? Had she fallen? Had she gotten stuck under the ice? I stopped trying to remember it before I gave myself a panic attack. That happened sometimes when I pushed too hard to remember that day. Whatever I had done, even the monster in me looked at me and said monstrous. A wave of guilt and nausea hit me. Let's go, I said. Alex, babe, I'm sorry. I just sleep better when I'm with you, said Sandra in a baby voice. How would you know that when you've never slept over? I said, getting annoyed. Felix. Said Tanya, getting angry at me for butting into Alex and Sandra's dispute. It's our birthday, babe, I said to Tanya. Let's leave on a high note. Tanya rolled her eyes but pulled me in for a kiss. My wolf did something he had literally never done before and he had pulled a lot of stunts. He grabbed control of me so suddenly and so forcefully that I stumbled backwards from Tanya, yanking myself away from her. I literally almost fell over. He had never been this adamant about not getting affection from anyone but our future Luna before, whoever she was. What the fuck? I screamed at him. No. He rasped so loudly it made my head throb. It echoed like an alpha voice command even though my dad hadn't officially handed over to us yet. He usually never spoke directly. He was more of an awareness at the back of my mind, judging and nagging and snatching control in intense situations. I knew what he wanted and thought and felt instinctively rather than through conversation. He came forwards when I shifted. Some wolves spoke to their counterparts constantly but not all were conversational. The more savage, the less talkative. Mine definitely felt actions spoke louder than words but he was speaking tonight. We're going home. Now. He snarled and I felt as though my head would split open. I just walked towards the door. Tanya ran behind me and practically hung off my arm which was upsetting my wolf even more. Where's, where's Sandra's sister? Isn't she supposed to come and pick up the girls? I asked, bending over with my palms on my knees. Felix, big bro, are you okay? Asked Calix. I felt his arms around my middle in case I fell over. I probably looked bad. Ugh. I hated this. I hated feeling like a weakling because I couldn't control my wolf. I didn't call her yet because I thought you'd let us sleep over, whined Sandra. My wolf wanted me to use my alpha voice on the girls and send them home, their homes. I'll drive the girls home, offered Gamma Caden. There's no space in his car for all three of us. Declared Sandra. What are you talking about, hun, it's an SUV and there's only five of us total if we drop you three so we wouldn't need more seats but we have them. We could also drop you guys actually. Said Christina. 
Felix doesn't look so good. He shouldn't drive, she said softly. He didn't drive here, said Alex. I drove the three of us. I'll get him home. He just needs some rest and rehydration. Okay, said Caden slowly, not buying that. Message me when you drop the girls off so I know they're safe, instructed Alex. Alex. Wine Sandra. Sandra, said Alex sternly. I heard the sound of her stomping away in her heels towards Caden's car. We'll message, yet. Let us know if Felix is okay too, please, said Christina. I'm fine, I said trying to sound cheerful like she was overreacting but it came out feeble. Sure, she said, unconvinced. The others piled into Caden's car. Calix's phone rang. The update. My very first alpha report. Said Calix excitedly. Calix, your brother is dying, come here and help me carry him to the car. Said Alex sternly. Calix's POV Felix had his period or something but I was about to get my first alpha report, an update on the chastity shifting situation. Hello, I said eagerly. Hi honey. Said mom brightly. How's my big boy? You're an alpha. How do you feel? It's not official yet, I admitted. Dad had to pass the position to us and then the power would transfer but physiologically we were already alphas. Calix. Snarled Alex. One minute. I yelled back. How was Chastity's shift? I asked quickly. My dad took the phone. She went out and stood in the snow like 15 minutes early. She waited around until midnight hit. She shifted without even trying at exactly midnight on her birthday, said Dad, sounding surprised. That's good obviously, I said, happy for her. Yeah but I would expect that more from a pack leader. Chastity is just an omega, said my dad. My wolf snarled suddenly. My wolf was a peaceful guy so I was surprised. Maybe Chastity is more powerful than you think dad. I said. Yeah, maybe, he said, sounding strangely worried. Nothing bad had happened so what was the issue? You, you've never really demanded much of anything, said dad. But you wanted us to watch Chastity. Why? She lives with us, I said automatically. Who else will look out for her? Okay, sure, said dad. Okay, honey, called mom. We love you. We're proud of you. Gotta go. Thanks guys. Love you too. I said quickly. Alex was watching me with black eyes. He had carried Felix to the car himself and out him in the back seat. I hopped into the passenger seat. Sorry, I mumbled. Cramps, Felix. I asked. Felix gave me the finger though his eyes remained shut. He'll live, I announced. Alex's eyes returned to blue. He chuckled. He sped off. Alex? Driving above the speed limit? I didn't tease him about it because I knew he was already in a foul mood. He was so protective over us. I really appreciated that. My wolf was acting as though some great surprise was waiting for us at home. Was mom gonna surprise us with an early gift? My wolf told me that wasn't it. It was something, life-changing. Suddenly, the car screeched to a halt. I jerked forwards but my seatbelt kept me in place. Felix moaned in the back seat. I had heard a thud behind me. He must have banged into something. You okay, Felix? Asked Alex. Felix gave a thumbs up. What happened? Was it an animal running across or something? What made you stop so suddenly? I asked, worried. It was snowing. I could see nothing particularly dangerous ahead other than the frosty road itself. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Murmured Alex. He seemed out of it. Calix, you okay? He asked. Yeah, I said, nodding. How's your head? Asked Alex. Good. I said, making it sound like a question. I was so puzzled. I, I can't drive right now, my wolf is, being very loud, said Alex. He keeps trying to take over so he can mash the accelerate and speed home. It's disconcerting. Is Felix's issue wolf related too? I asked. Felix nodded slowly. Be honest, you okay enough to drive? If you're not, tell me, said Alex. I'm okay, I said. Drive slowly please. Implored Alex. 
The roads are icy and you've been drinking and your wolf might start to get aggressive too if it's happening to Felix and me. I nodded. We switched seats. Alex made me drive at a snail's pace. Our pack lands were vast with the houses and buildings spread miles apart. Winter Moon Snack was almost an hour away driving at a normal speed. By the time we got home it was almost three in the morning. Chastity was probably asleep already. I was exhausted. Both Alex and Felix had fallen asleep on the way. I woke them up. Big brothers, come on, I said. They were both groggy. Alex was still steady on his feet. Felix was doing a lot better but we still helped him up the porch steps and then up the staircase to the first floor. Where's Chastity? Felix wondered aloud. In her room, Mom told me, I said while we were helping him up the stairs. We helped Felix straight to his bed. Fighting my wolf tires me out sometimes, mumbled Felix. Get some rest, said Alex gently, taking Felix's boots off and tucking him in. Happy birthday, Felix. Good night, I whispered. Happy birthday Calix and Alex. Good night, he said softly back. He turned onto his front and fell asleep. Happy birthday, little bro, said Alex as we walked back into the hallway. Thanks, happy birthday to you too, I said, smiling. Thanks for driving us home, said Alex, hugging me and clapping me on the back. Good night, he said. Good night, I said. I waited for Alex to shut his door. I stood in the hallway. I yawned. I blew a kiss towards Chastity's door instead of going straight up to it like usual. Good night, Chastity, I whispered. My wolf and I were shocked when we entered our room. It smelled amazing. There was a distinctly feminine scent lingering in the room. The scent made me shiver in delight. Who would have been in my room? The smell was floral and familiar, roses and honeysuckle. My mind was numb. I tried to sleep but the delicious smell kept me up and frankly rock hard. I had never had just a scent alone with no girl present make me this aroused. What would become of me if I actually had to face the girl to whom the scent belonged? I couldn't get over how maddeningly familiar it was yet the effect it was having on me was unprecedented. I could take it no more as dawn approached. How could I not identify the scent? Someone smelled this good before now and I hadn't noticed? This had to be her. My Luna. Ugh, what a goddess she must be to smell like this. I couldn't wait to worship her. I was ready to fall at the feet of a girl I might or might not have known. When I couldn't take it anymore, I went to get my elder brothers. My big brothers were annoying and overbearing sometimes but they knew what to do in situations like these. Wolf stuff. My brain was too tired from driving everyone home and then not being able to sleep. They had actually gotten some rest in the car and probably just now. I banged on Alex's door. I heard the sound of someone scrambling about inside. Good. Alex was sufficiently worried and in big bro mode. I ran to Felix's door and did the same. Felix inside made louder noises as he stomped about. Good. Felix was up before noon and in attack mode. Alex opened his door, rushing out into the hallway. He had thrown a t-shirt on. Felix came out of his room shirtless. Felix was a pair of socks away from joining a nudist colony. What's wrong, little bro? Asked Alex, concern evident in his tone and expression. Both Alex and Felix seemed to be feeling a lot better. It better be good. It's six o'clock in the morning. We partied last night and we're partying tonight, said Felix, doing a little dance and yawning. Smell my room, I instructed. Alex and Felix laughed. I walked away from them, heading back to my room. They would see what I meant as soon as that intoxicating smell hit them. They followed me. Enough bullshit. Said Felix his steps heavy as he stomped into my room. The beautiful scent stopped him in his tracks. Alex then entered and his eyes widened. Oh my god, moaned Felix, shutting his eyes. What is that? He started sniffing around my room, searching for clues. I stifled a laugh. Little bro, who was in your room? Asked Alex sharply. Chapter 4, It's Been Chastity All Along Felix's POV baby boy Calix woke me up at the crack of dawn. I thought he had been pulling some stunt. Smell my room, he had said. Now, here I was, actually smelling his room. I knew what this meant instantly as the floral sweet scent washed over me, making my heart race. My heart was working overtime. Blood rushed down to my groin. I groaned. Her scent alone was making me painfully hard. 
I wasn't sure how I was gonna hold it together when I met her face to face. My wolf was howling. This had to be our mate's scent. We'd wanted this for so long. It was surreal to actually be faced with the prospect of our beautiful mate. The smell was familiar too. Why was it all over Calix's room, even his sheets smelled of her a little? Oh fuck no. Had Calix already mated our mate without even saying anything? I was livid but also a tad proud. I didn't know baby boy Calix had it like that you've been with our mate. I growled. You're keeping her all to yourself. Calix's eyes widened in shock at my accusation. No, I don't know whose scent it is and it's driving me crazy, said Calix, looking exhausted. I felt sorry for yelling at him, remembering how he had driven us all home while we napped. With this scent in his room, there was no way he had gotten any sleep. My wolf who had finally calmed down was at it again, driving me crazy, barking orders and trying to grab a hold of my body. Only this time he wasn't giving me a headache. He was flashing pornographic images in my mind of our mate. He wanted to find her pronto and bend her over. Our mate's been in this room, I said excitedly as the realization hit me. I was potentially just minutes away from caressing her and claiming her. She found us. Oh I can't wait to get my hands on her. I growled. My wolf howled happily. Finally we were on the same page and had the same objective. What about Sandra, Tanya, and Avery? Asked Calix, mentioning our current girlfriends. I had momentarily forgotten they existed. Oh yeah, I wasn't single. I could be single for a girl with a scent like this in a heartbeat. We've only been dating them like a couple weeks. They know they're not our mates so it was a temporary thing. I'm gonna end it with Tanya over the phone, I said absent-mindedly. She would probably be pissed. When my ex, Roxy, had wanted to end things because she had found her mate, I had been cool about it. Roxy was Keaton's daughter. With a beta for a dad, she knew faded mates were a huge blessing and gift and should not be neglected. I had given her my blessing and she started dating her actual mate. I wasn't expecting that kind of smooth sailings reaction from Tanya but I would have that headache later. Yeah, agreed Alex, making sense for once. If we can find our mate in time for the party we don't want the girls showing up and harassing her. My wolf and I began to panic at the thought of our sweet little mate being harassed by those three jealous she-wolves. There was something innocent about her scent. It was very new, as if she had only just developed such a scent. She had to be newly of age. Yeah, they'd be jealous, said Calix. And there's one of her and three of them so we better tell them before tonight. We all nodded in agreement. We were all sitting on Calix's bed now. Her safety was the top priority. Who would be in my room? Baby boy Calix wondered. My heart wouldn't stop racing. I had an inkling of who could be in his room. There's something familiar about the smell, said Alex, smiling. It kinda smells a little like, Alex paused, frowning. He got up and ran down the hallway. My wolf and I knew what he was doing and where he was going. Alex's POV I ran down the first floor hallway to the door of Chastity's tiny room. Honeysuckle and roses. Her full scent made me shiver. Now that she had come of age all the pieces of the puzzle fit together perfectly. I sighed. Chastity. A part of me had always known. The rest of me was shocked. I put my handle on the doorknob. It was unlocked. I opened it eagerly. The room was empty. No beautiful grown-up deliciously scented chastity in bed. My wolf and I became grumpy instantly. I frowned. Chastity's room was so small. There were so many empty guest bedrooms much bigger than this. Why didn't mom and dad give her one of those? I was in charge now. She was changing rooms. I was excited about that. Chastity would be fun to spoil and pamper. I knew this was an invasion of privacy but I was itching to go through her things and see what I should buy her first. My younger brothers came up behind me. Felix looked dumbfounded. Calix walked into the little room and lay in her cot, hugging her pillow, deeply inhaling her scent. I'm gonna wait for her to come back, right here, he said, curling up in her tiny cot. He could barely fit in it. He didn't fit in it actually. His legs hung over the edge. We were identical. That meant I didn't fit in Chastity's bed. She was definitely changing rooms. It was non-negotiable. I wanted her in my room ideally but that would be a huge fight. Felix would throw a fit and Calix would throw a tantrum. I wanna go get her right now, said Felix, his face stricken. We have a lot of talking to do. Relax, Felix, I said. 
Our mate already lives with us so we're good, I continued, grinning. Ugh. I needed my Luna right now. Chastity was probably downstairs already doing chores. Tonight she'd be wrapped up in my arms. The mate bond would hit her and she would finally pay attention to me. She would want to be around me the way I always wanted to be around her. I was gonna give her everything she had ever missed out on times two or maybe times three. I glanced at my brothers. She was gonna make such a beautiful Luna. She was so fucking gorgeous. She was kind of a moody brat though so I wasn't sure about the job part of being Luna. I smirked, thinking about discipling her. My wolf had a lot of ideas. I liked Chastity's sassiness to be honest. I probably needed a fiery Luna like that. Fate knew best. Felix's POV Chastity was our mate, my baby. Ugh. She hated me. She was gonna fucking run away. I just knew it. I'd hunt her down, follow her to the ends of the earth but it would be stressful as fuck. Where the fuck was she right now? My wolf roared with jealousy. What if she did have a little boyfriend or something? I would throw him out of a window from the attic of this huge house. My wolf had always known but he couldn't fully share it with me. Pack laws were strict and my wolf was a stickler for them. Mates who were not of age were not to be even acknowledged. One might have an inkling but the only confirmation was to wait. Chastity was probably doing chores. I calmed myself a little. I tried to soothe my wolf but we were both freaking out about multiple things. Our baby was doing chores. That was fucking unacceptable. Call me a chauvinist but my baby was not gonna work ever. I wanted my baby's only responsibilities to be fucking me and dressing up for me, in that order. The dressing up part wasn't even necessary per se. I was just gonna rip those clothes off anyway. I wanted a trophy wife. I didn't care what year it was. Spare me the essays. I was part wolf. My woman wasn't working. My family was loaded. There was no point in me having a stressed out wife and stressed out wives were tired at night. I needed my wife energetic at night like me. But first, I needed to make my baby love me back. Know it all Alex and baby boy Calix thought Chastity was just gonna fall into our arms after we'd made her life difficult growing up. She didn't know about any of the nice gestures we'd done for her except for the ones from Calix. No, we're not good you idiots. I said incredulously, staring at them like they were crazy. Our mate is Charity. Charity. I used her nickname out loud by accident even though I never called her that when I internally obsessed over her. Don't call her that. Snarled Calix, his blue eyes turning black, as he shot up from where he had been lying down on the cot. I was shocked at his aggression when standing up for Chastity. My wolf and I approved. That was more like it. Chastity would need strong alphas to protect her. Sorry. Sorry. Shit. It's a bad habit. Chastity, I said. Her real name felt good to say out loud. Chastity. My baby. I wondered if she'd let me sleep in her room. I looked at this shitty room. No. She would sleep in mine instead. I should light candles and put rose petals on the bed like we were in a movie or something. Girls loved that shit. Did Chastity drink wine? Red or white? She had mentioned two girls from school. I wished I had her friend's numbers to find out how to better impress her. What's your problem? Asked Alex. He was looking through Chastity's things, trying to get ideas for what to buy Chastity. We just might have to buy her affection until we could break her emotional walls down and develop a real connection. We have to go to the mall as soon as it opens at 10, said Alex. It's Chastity's birthday too and I'm sure mom and dad didn't get her anything. I was ready to buy Chastity's love if necessary but there were more important things at hand. Are you hearing yourself? I asked. Again. What is your problem? Asked Alex. Calix opened his eyes to glare at me from his spot on the tiny cot. Chastity is our mate. We had no idea because she was not of age until today. I explained, waving my arms around. Calix and Alex were not following. We've treated Chastity like shit. When she realizes she's our mate, she's going to reject us. I said. Calix shot up into a sitting position again, his expression panicked. No, she's not, he said. No, she can't. We've been waiting three years for our mate. Chastity said she didn't want a mate, remember? I said, spelling it out for them. Yeah, said Alex. But when the mate bond actually hits her, she'll be putty in our hands. Calix beamed grinning at Alex. 
Yep, Calix agreed. I rolled my eyes. Do you remember why Chastity did not want a mate? She said because he'd be mean to her like we were. Her mate is literally us. We had made her think even her own mate would be a jerk and we were her mates. Fuck. Calix and Alex were starting to look worried. It was dawning on them. She's going to freak out. I said. She's going to try to leave. Remember, she's been talking about turning 18, finishing high school and leaving. The thought of my baby, Chastity, leaving me made me feel physically ill. I had to salvage this somehow. Calix's POV Chastity was my mate, our mate. It made so much sense. I lay in her cot, surrounded by that beautiful smell. All I needed now was my little goddess in bed with me. I didn't want to delay the marking and mating process. Chastity was a bit of a slippery minx. I didn't fully trust her to not skip town for a while to clear her head but I didn't think she would leave us permanently. Felix begged to differ. He thought we had already blown it. My stomach was in knots. Alex smirked suddenly. She has seven more months of high school. It's November. We have until June or July with her to convince her otherwise. Felix calmed down a little, thinking it over. I grinned mischievously at them, thinking about the future months we had with Goddess Chastity. She would be ours. I was sure of it. I would make her mine if it was the last thing I did. I was the most persuasive of the three of us when it came to girls. Alex drew them in with his stoic vibe. Felix needed anger management classes and a shocking number of girls were into that. I knew how to sweet-talk a girl properly. I had plans for Goddess Chastity. My wolf showed me a dozen different positions that might change Chastity's mind about us. Orgasms tended to put things in perspective for girls. I had about half a year to make myself indispensable to her. I couldn't wait to see and hear her come. I would be her first. I just knew it. She was meant to be mine. I just needed to get her away from this place, somewhere relaxing. We just needed the right ambience. My wolf was showing me images of the tropics in a happy bikini-clad chastity. Finally, something I could get behind, literally chastity might hate us now but by next summer we'll be making her squirt, I informed my elder brothers. Alex and Felix looked shocked for a moment and then burst into laughter. What would gloom and doom do without me? Chapter 5, Paving the Way for Chastity Calix's POV waiting for Chastity here was pointless. She was probably working on the party planning downstairs. I was wasting time. I needed her in my arms right now. I could only imagine the effect she would now have on me in person if just her scent was driving me wild this is stupid. I declared. I need my mate, right now. I want Chastity. I stormed out of her room and down the stairs with my brothers following behind me. I was surprised to find Rhonda in the kitchen at this early hour. Where's Chastity? I asked. I was sleep deprived and grumpy and I didn't want to deal with Rhonda's thirst right now. Hey, sleepy head. Good morning. Cood Rhonda. Have you seen Chastity, Rhonda? Asked Alex. I have presents for the birthday boys. She squealed. Is she here? Felix asked. I could tell he was getting annoyed. Who? Asked Rhonda, handing each of us a gift bag. Who? How did she not know Chastity? They were working together on this party. She must not have heard us properly. Thanks, Rhonda. Said Alex. Chastity. Where is she? Repeated Alex. Rhonda frowned. She shifted and went for a run, Rhonda said clearly pissed that we were looking for Chastity when she had shown up early to surprise us. I felt slightly bad but my wolf was growling. He was getting agitated. He needed his mate. He wanted to shift and run through the snow with her. Oh yeah. Said Alex. She can shift now, he said, grinning. Okay, said Rhonda slowly. She rolled her eyes at us. Since when do you guys care about charity? She asked. I snarled before I could stop myself. I glared at Felix. This charity nickname was his fault. Alex glared at Rhonda. Rhonda was taken aback at our unfriendly and short-tempered behavior. It's Chastity, corrected Felix, though he was the one who responsive for the stupid nickname. We left a disgruntled Rhonda in the kitchen. Calix, try to get some rest and as soon as the malls open, we'll go looking for Chastity's birthday presents. Said Alex excitedly. I don't think I could sleep now even if I had a tranquilizer. I'm so anxious to see Chastity, I admitted. 
Try to keep your cool, said Alex encouragingly. We need to keep a calm head if we're gonna talk Chastity into accepting the mate bond right away. I sighed. I felt a little cheated. I had not been as vicious towards Chastity when we had been little. Now, I was likely to pay for my elder brother's behavior. I won't be able to sleep, I grumbled. I just know it. I went upstairs and flopped onto my bed. Chastity's gorgeous scent tantalized me. Ugh. Alex's POV I tried to get some more sleep but it was futile. I was up again around half past nine. I showered quickly and woke up my brothers. We drove to the nearest mall. So what are we getting Chastity? Asked Felix as we walked through the mall. There were hardly any other customers this early. I had realized some obvious things she didn't have that she could really use. I felt guilty just thinking about some of the simple things she was missing. I noticed she doesn't have snow boots or a proper winter coat. She also doesn't even have a backpack for school, I admitted, feeling immensely guilty. I should have noticed these things before. I knew she was paying off a debt so my parents didn't want to spend money on her but that was them. I had been a man for the past three years. I could have made her life a lot easier. I should have. Fuck yet, yeah, she always carries her books in her hand or uses one of those sturdier grocery bags on mornings when I'm seeing her off to the bus stop. Her winter coat is yours, Alex, and she wears normal shoes, said Felix. He squirmed uncomfortably too. Okay so we have three practical things but she deserves luxury. Let's just give her a credit card, suggested Calix. One with a really high limit so she can just treat herself whenever she wants. Look at baby boy Calix all grown up into sugar daddy Calix, joked Felix. I chuckled. I remembered seeing Chastity in one of mom's dresses on New Year's Eve one year. It had been baby blue and she had looked so pretty in it. I spotted baby blue snow boots. I had written down all of Chastity's sizes. We got a matching winter coat. Chastity doesn't even have a cell phone, I realized aloud. Or a laptop, added Felix. Or a tablet, said Calix. We bought her an iPhone, an iPad, and a MacBook at the Apple Store. We put one of our credit cards in an envelope with a bow on it so she could buy other things. Guys, I kinda got Chastity a car before I even knew she was our mate, revealed Felix. I was stunned and so was Calix. We stared at him, our mouths agape. Felix's POV now that I knew Chastity was my fated mate, I was too scared to give her the Range Rover I had gotten for her. She would probably just get in and drive away. I didn't need her to have wheels right now. I was thinking I should work on our relationship stability and give her the car at Christmas. I'm so scared she'll run away, I confessed. We all are, admitted Alex. Even I'm scared she'll skip town and she actually likes me, said Calix. Alex and I glared at him. He smirked at us. Jelly, he said. You are so childish, Calix, Alex said, shaking his head. Well Chastity wants to play with me. If you want your mate to stay put, you need to listen to me, said Calix, his expression smug as he folded his arms. He's right, I said softly. What do we do? Said Alex, sighing. Hold off on giving her the car. It's a great gift but it'll be way too easy and tempting for her to just drive away from a place that she hates and never look back, explained Calix. My stomach was in knots. Can it be her Christmas gift? I asked, feeling a tad odd taking advice from my little bro. Yes, he said confidently. I smiled. Here's the game plan. Said Calix, reminding me of when we had all been football players together. Our only objective today is to make sure Chastity understands that she'll no longer be a maid and housekeeper at the pack house. She won't have any responsibilities other than her schoolwork and whatever stuff she chooses to do. She won't even be expected to be Luna right away or to be mated or marked soon, said Calix. My wolf growled, not liking those limitations. If Chastity thinks we're rushing her romantically or foisting the position of Luna on her, she'll run for the hills, trust me. Specified Calix. So how and when are we gonna get, physical? I asked. I didn't want to rush her either but I needed my mate to be my mate not my roommate. She needs to feel safe. Safe enough to feel comfortable alone with us. We need to eliminate as much stress from her life as possible and then we need to get her away from the pack house, far away, explained Calix. My Christmas present to Chastity is gonna be a vodka in the tropics and that is when we make our move. You think she'll mate us just because we take her to the beach? I said dryly. No, she'll mate us when she feels safe, 
relaxed and sexy, said Calix. No more calling her fat, added Calix. I winced. Fuck. Why had I ever said that? Fuck. She probably hated me the most by a mile. I felt sick. My baby was everything to me and I was gonna do whatever it took to make her comfortable. She had a lot of bad memories in the pack house. Now was my chance to replace them all with good ones. Alex's POV we're forgetting one very important thing. I said as we waited for Chastity's gifts to be wrapped and gift bagged. There was a store in this mall devoted to that. Dad had introduced me to it. He always got mom's presents wrapped here as she was the one who did the gift wrapping usually at Christmas. What's that? Asked Felix anxiously. He was a bundle of nerves today. I had never seen Felix like this. The girls, said Calix. I nodded. The girls, I agreed. Felix sighed. Tanya already had suspicions regarding how much I would bring up Chastity. I think Sandra did too, said Felix. Avery didn't, said Calix. Avery is not too good at putting two and two together, said Felix bluntly. Calix frowned and narrowed his eyes but he didn't say anything. I knew whatever feelings he had for Avery would already be on the decline. The mate bone was inevitable. Are we really gonna break up with them over the phone like Felix suggested? Asked Calix. We shouldn't, I said. They'll still be members of our pack. We don't them resenting us. We can't go about it in a tactless manner. They need to still feel comfortable with us being their alphas and know that there are no hard feelings, I explained. I appreciated the time I had spent with Sandra. She had been a little difficult at times but she was still a decent person in my eyes. Like all my ex-girlfriends, she was beautiful. No one held a candle to Chastity though. Chastity was the sun. Everything and everyone else merely revolved around her. We should ask them to meet us here at the mall, I said. Felix took a deep breath. Calix nodded. We called the girls and asked that they meet us at one of the mall restaurants. We chose a bistro that doubled as a coffee house. The girls showed up with our birthday gifts in hand. My stomach lurched. I felt like such a jerk but honesty and a clean break was the best way to do this. Sandra wrapped her arms around me and leant in for a kiss. I cupped her face in my hands and leant backwards so that our lips wouldn't meet. What? She asked. Please sit down, I said gently. Tanya looked alarmed. She eyed Felix curiously. He gave her a chaste hug and encouraged her to sit too. Calix kissed Avery on the cheek and led her to her seat. It was a large booth so all three of us sat facing the girls. I was directly opposite Sandra who sat in the middle. Avery was in the corner of her side of the booth facing Calix and Felix and Tanya were on the ends. I joined my hands and rested them on the table, making sure to choose my words carefully. Girls, you are all beautiful and special and one day some lucky guys will realize that you three are their mates and they're gonna be over the moon, I began. Yeah, said Felix eagerly. When you meet your mates, you will all be so happy. My ex met hers while we were together and it hurt but I understood. I couldn't deny her true love like that. She's so happy with her faded mate now and I waited my turn and now that turn is here, said Felix. I looked pointedly at Felix, ensuring he would not be too blunt. Tanya's eyes widened. Sandra's eyes narrowed. Avery looked at us intently, her smile unchanged. So we love you. You're our friends and pack members and you can always come to us if you need anything but we have found our fated mate, said Calix gently. Avery's smile faltered. So, she said. So, said Calix, pausing, we want to be with her as we are well, fated. Who is she? Asked Sandra blatantly. That's not important right now, I said gently. I didn't want this to be more dramatic than it had to be. I didn't need Chastity having to deal with cattiness on top of everything else. How long have you known? Said Tanya, her tone tense. We found out this morning, said Felix. And there's just one of her. Asked Sandra. Yes, I said simply. Lucky her, said Sandra snidely, glaring at me. You have every right to be upset. All I ask is for you to understand that this isn't being done with any malice in mind and ch, I stopped myself, my pulse quickening. I heard a sharp intake of breath from Calix. Felix looked at me with wide eyes. I had almost said Chastity's name. That was a close one. Our mate is totally innocent in all of this and we haven't even had a proper chat with her yet. We wanted to speak to you first and clear the air, I said. Will she be at the party tonight? 
asked Sandra angrily. Yes, I said stiffly. Sandra laughed humorlessly. Who are all those gifts for? demanded Tanya. Us, said Felix quickly. You wrapped gifts that were meant for yourselves. asked Tanya incredulously. Well, they're from each one of us to the other two. We had to shop for each other, said Felix. Quit thinking. It was a lie but it would help spare them some pain. They didn't need to know we were excited to shower and lavish chastity with gifts right away. It was her birthday though and she had had so many shitty birthdays which were totally undeserved. She was a sweet girl who hadn't asked for such a complicated life. So we're not gonna be your dates for the party? Asked Sandra incredulously. No, sorry, I mumbled. Felix's POV Obviously we wanted to take our fated mate and future Luna as our date to our birthday party and alpha ceremony. It would be the only sensible thing to do. Why can't we have one last hurrah together? Said Sandra, sighing. Alex held her hand. Because there's no point in delaying the inevitable. I have no plans to be unfaithful to you so I'm telling you the truth and I also don't plan on playing around with you behind my mate's back. I have respect for both of you and I want to show you that, said Alex. Alex always had the political answer ready for them. I would let him handle the PR when we became alphas officially. I would throw in a joke here and there to keep the crowd warmed up whenever we gave speeches in future. Calix would do his usual sweet talking. I want to talk to you alone, Alex, hissed Sandra, clearly annoyed. Those two went for a walk and so did Calix and Avery. I sat there with Tanya. I know how it is. Trust me. Roxy left me for her mate, I said. And you were just fine with it? Asked Tanya incredulously. Well, yeah, I said, shrugging. Because I knew one day I would be the one who to find my mate. The same will happen for you one day and you'll have to tell some guy the truth and I hope he's patient and understands and wishes you all the best. If he gets loud with you, just call me, I said, grinning. I was still protective over Tanya. I did care about her but chastity was everything to me. She could make or break me with one word. She gave me nosebleed highs and swimming with the fishes lows with one look. I hoped she would accept me. You said you hadn't talked to her yet. Clarified Tanya. I nodded. What if she rejects you? Asked Tanya. My stomach did backflips. Fuck. Just the thought of that alone was excruciating. I hope not, I said simply. No hard feelings. I asked. I went over to her side and hugged her. She reluctantly hugged me back. I want to know who it is, she said. You'll find out soon enough, I said, brushing a strand of hair behind her ear. I couldn't have her going all lifetime movie network psycho on my baby, Chastity. She sighed. We sat there. The silence was heavy. Alex and Sandra returned. Sandra looked furious. Alex looked uncomfortable. As soon as Calix and Avery came over to us, Sandra barked, Girls, let's go. The three held hands and strutted off, taking the birthday presents they had gotten for us with them. I didn't blame them. I felt like such a jerk. I picked up my phone and called Roxy on our way back to the house. We had spent all day at the mall and essentially had lost track of time. Hello, said Roxy. I could hear her mate asking who it was in the background. I was gonna be the same way once Chastity started receiving calls on this new iPhone we had gotten her. Hey. I said. Felix. Squealed Roxy. I heard the guy ask why her ex was calling her. We're friends, she said to him. What's up? She asked. I found my mate. I said, the excitement hitting me all over again. Roxy gasped. He found his mate, she said to her mate. The guy said good. It's Chastity, I admitted. Roxy laughed. What's so funny? I said, immediately feeling protective of Chastity. I knew it. She said. You did? I asked. Yet. Yeah. It was obvious. You were so obsessed with her. You called me Chastity or Charity half the time. She said. Not half the time maybe twice tops, I said defensively. So are you gonna announce Chastity as the Luna later at your alpha ceremony? It's perfect timing, said Roxy. I don't think she's ready for that, I said honestly. I fucked up. I feel like a fuck up. Tanya probably hates me now and I feel guilty about that and I feel even guiltier about how shitty I was to Chastity growing up. I admitted. 
Tanya will get over it. Didn't you? She asked. I was happy for you from the start though, I said. Yeah, but she probably just feels blindsided. Just a few hours before all the glory of your boyfriend becoming Alpha and he finds his real Luna. Sandra must be pissed. Said Roxy. I glanced at Alex who was driving. He had heard. He nodded. Yeah, Sandra was pissed. And Avery, well, Avery is Avery, said Roxy. I couldn't have put it better myself. How am I gonna get Chastity to love me? I asked blatantly. Roxy burst into laughter. You're pretty endearing when you're ready you know, said Roxy, making me feel a little better. Chastity is probably so thrilled she never has to wash a dish again in her life, chuckled Roxy. Give her your credit card and let her blow off some steam at the mall for the shit you put her through. Said Roxy. I laughed. We are giving her a credit card actually, I said. And we just came from the mall. So she's shopping up a storm already, said Roxy. No. I said. She didn't go with us. Should I have taken her shopping rather than picked out gifts for her? You'll learn what she likes as time passes. There's no clear-cut answer to that. Just take it easy, she said. Thanks Roxy, I said, feeling a little relieved. I still appreciate you being cool about it when I found my mate, said Roxy. You play tough but you're sweet so show chastity that. I wasn't so sure about that but I would try. See you later, Felix. I gotta go. Said Roxy. Sure, bye. I said. Thanks by the way. I hung up. You're not gonna believe what happened with me and Sandra, said Alex. What? I asked, intrigued. She demanded breakup sex, said Alex. What? I asked angrily. And you fucked her? I demanded, immediately angry on Chastity's behalf. How could he? We were already on thin ice with her? Ugh thin ice. I stopped thinking about that half-faded memory. No. Of course not. Said Alex indignantly. My wolf and I relaxed. We were relieved. And she specified no condom, said Alex. And no pulling out either I bet. That girl is psycho. I said. She just wants a little alpha Alex to raise so he can challenge you and our son with chastity for the pack later, I added. Alex squirmed uncomfortably. She's not all bad, said Alex. I hope she and the others find their mates soon. I cannot stress enough how carefully we need to manage Chastity's stress levels. She has every reason to leave us. I sighed deeply. She could go wherever she wanted. I'd follow her, that was all. Calix's POV I felt anxious about us being late for our own birthday party and alpha ceremony where Chastity was undoubtedly being made to do chores by our mother. We're late to our own birthday party and alpha ceremony, I said to my elder brothers. We heard you the first ten times, Calix said Felix. The later we are, the longer Chastity has to spend doing whatever stupid party chores mom and Rhonda are probably delegating to her. I pointed out. Felix flinched. Alex looked worried. I don't want her to be pissed when we get there and need to have the mate talk with her, I specified. What I was saying dawned on my brothers. Alex sped up. I couldn't wait to see Goddess Chastity. I couldn't wait to experience my first pack gathering with my mate. I envisioned Chastity sitting on my lap, dancing with me, feeding me birthday cake, kissing me. I hoped I wasn't kidding myself. Maybe not the kissing part. She wouldn't be ready though we'd kissed already. My elder brothers didn't know that but one New Year's Eve when we had all been teenagers, I had kissed Chastity at midnight. I had never felt my spirit soar so high because of a kiss even though it had just been a peck. I should have been more honest with myself and Chastity and everyone else including my brothers and just started dating Chastity back then. At the very least, I wished I had befriended her properly and openly. I sighed. I couldn't take the past back but I could give her everything I had in future starting today. Okay a champagne glass and nodded at her. Chastity turned to us next and she seemed startled. She looked at us, trailing her eyes over the three of us and biting her lip. She was clearly physically attracted to us but that might not translate into a proper relationship. I could not take my eyes off of her. I could not speak either. She held out the platter of champagne glasses, offering them to us. Alex's POV our mother was making Chastity serve champagne even though it was her birthday too and it totally wasn't necessary. We had a party planner. Could she not have called out a last-minute server? 
my thoughts were racing. I was trying to find the perfect words that would make Chastity consider giving us a chance. I just needed a chance. I knew she would love being with me. I was ready to give her any kind of relationship she wanted. I just needed to be in her life. The mate bond would endear her to me eventually. Hopefully, it was working already. Chastity looked stunning in her mini dress. Other males were glancing at her. Some staring. My wolf growled. He wanted his mark in plain sight on her neck but I kept him under control. She got closer to us and her delicious scent made me woozy. She offered us the champagne she was holding. I took the tray from her and gave it to Rhonda. My mate was signing off duty indefinitely. Felix's POV chastity came into view serving champagne. She was in this little dress that showed her pretty legs and a bit of cleavage. Her hair was down in her usual loose curls. She was so effortlessly beautiful. I did not know what to say to her. Her mouth-watering scent was numbing my mind. I couldn't form a coherent sentence. Alex took the tray of champagne from her and gave it to the party planner. Good. My baby was not to be working. I forbade it. Once she said yes to giving us a chance, I had some ground rules to lay down. No working. No staying out all night. No talking to those salivating unmated males in the pack. Calix grabbed her hand and I instantly felt jealous at how easy it was for him top initiate physical contact. Alex was motioning for us to take Chastity upstairs. I hoped she didn't swat my hands away and get angry. I placed my hands on her waist from behind, gently prompting her forwards. We went up to Calix's room. My whole body was on fire with lust for her as I held her by her perfectly narrow waist and deliciously wide hips. They would be fun to hold onto when we began getting to know each other. I could smell her core getting wet for us because of the physical contact. Her body was anticipating our first encounter with her. I could only imagine how heavenly it would be when I buried myself in her to the hilt and buried my nose in her beautiful hair. I snapped myself out of it. I needed to focus. We arrived in Calix's room and Chastity immediately let go of Calix's hand and extricated herself from me, scurrying over to the far wall and pressing her back to it. It hurt me to see her so afraid of us. My wolf was whining. Don't be scared, Chastity, pleaded Calix, already crestfallen at her reaction to us. We're not gonna hurt you, baby, I promised her. She was getting wetter between her legs and it was driving my wolf and me crazy. Her body yearned to be mated and mine needed to claim his mate. We need to talk, said Alex sternly. Okay, Chastity. We three sat on Calix's bed while Chastity sat in an office chair with wheels by Calix's computer desk. She span on it nervously. She was looking around his room with curiosity. I realized Chastity had never been inside any of our rooms before today. We usually cleaned our own rooms. Without warning, my baby Chastity began to cry. My heart broke for her. She was so scared or perhaps disappointed to be fated to us. SHH, baby, it's okay, I said softly, handing her a tissue so she could dry her eyes. Calix grabbed her hand and pulled the chair wheeling it over to us so that she was within arm's reach of all three of us. Her scent made my dick harden. Fuck. I tried to calm myself. I could hear her heart racing while her flower continued to lubricate itself in anticipation of her three huge alphas. She was apprehensive but her she-wolf was readying herself to be marked and mated. I had not prepared myself for this, the smell of Chastity's sexual excitement. My wolf was begging me to mark her so she could not choose to reject us or leave. I couldn't do that her. It had to be her choice. I wanted her love for real. As you probably already know, Chastity, Alex said gently, you're our mate. All three of us. Triplets tend to have just one mate because, I know, she said, getting annoyed with us. She paused as if waiting for us to react to her annoyance. We merely watched her intently. Because identical triplets are naturally occurring clones, one fertilized egg that split into three so one mate, she explained further. I was glad she knew how it was with multiples. I had twin cousins whose mate had been floored with shock when she realized she was mated to two of them. She was more than happy now though. Exactly, said Alex smiling and agreeing with my baby. She dried my eyes and blew her nose. She was so cute. She smelled so yummy. I wanted to put my tongue deep inside her to taste the source of that aroused smell. You smell so fucking good, baby, I told her. I could feel my eyes turning black as my wolf came forwards, fighting me for dominance. Before I could stop him and myself, we reached out and caressed her knee. 
She shivered in response to our touch. Her skin was so smooth. I wanted to lick every inch of it. Easy, Felix. Warned Alex, removing my hand from her knee. Alex sighed. I tried to snap out of it. We're so 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 sorry, Chastity, murmured Alex. The way we've treated you is disgusting. We won't make any excuses for it. We don't deserve you but we want you as our mate and Luna. We're willing to spend the rest of our lives making everything up to you. I watched her expression carefully. She seemed shocked and pensive. My wolf and I were waiting on her response with bated breath. We're so sorry, Chastity, said Calix. Please let us love you. She blushed. God, I wanted to make her whole body flush while I pinned her under me. We're really sorry, baby, I said, pausing to search for the right words. For some reason, Chastity giggled suddenly. It was the cutest, most innocent, little sound. She was so perfectly soft and sweet, a contrast to our rough and harsh ways, and she was ours to claim. That was it. Something inside of me snapped. Something clicked like a switch turning off or maybe on. My wolf grabbed control completely. Mark her, was all he commanded. Oh, you're so fucking cute. I growled, eyes black and canines bared as I grabbed my little mate and pinned her to the wall intent on making her mine immediately. Due to the long duration of the audiobook it is divided into parts, the rest of the audiobook will be continued in the next episode and a link will be given in the video description. Don't forget, to subscribe, for more English novels. Like, and share with other people. It's make me happy, and encourage us to publish more. I wish you all the best with, smiley face, thank you so very much for your support.